wonderful to be together this morning for worship and to join online with those that are also with us. We thank you for joining with us online. It is a blessing knowing that we're all worshiping as one. We're having the opportunity to praise God and lift up our hearts and sing, hear the scripture, pray together. All of this is dwelling in us and is coming out in our joy as we lift up our praise together. 
Good morning, good morning. Many of you, when you were coming in today, received one of these small, laminated, beautifully made by Tom Frazier. Thank you. Um, and a reminder. So this right here is a reminder. You could put it up on your refrigerator. You could put it in a bookmark, whatever you would like. But during this season of Lent, we're hoping each of you will, as we're journeying through this time, will also keep in mind and wonder what the resurrection means to you. Having an opportunity to think about this during Lent, I believe will reveal to you uh, who God is in a way maybe that you haven't thought of before or with an emphasis in such a way that it allows you to just put this before you during this season of Lent. So put it in a place. We've got plenty of them if you need to, whatever it may be. I also wanted to let you know that today we're going to, through this season of Lent, have a call to worship. And the call to worship is going to be, the Lord is our portion. And then the response will be, we place our hope in Him. We're doing that as our call to worship during Lent because it's a reminder from the Lamentations, from Lamentations 3.24, that this is where we situate ourselves we situate ourselves recognizing how awesome and wonderful the Lord is. The Lord is our full portion. So we'll have this as our call to worship for the next six weeks. We'll do that at the beginning of our time together. If you have any desire to give online, we know that you can go to our website and do, at the drop down, there's a place where you can give online for those that are online. If you're also sign up and let us know the, that you're with us today, each of you can go ahead and pick up your red folder here and pass it down. We'd love to know who's present here and online. Thank you. Um, any other announcements for us today? Alrighty. Let us begin our time of worship and settling our hearts with our call to worship today. The Lord is our portion. We place our hope in Him. Amen.
I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know who oh, you say I am love when I can't feel a thing and you say I am strong when I think I am weak and you say If everyone can remain standing, please turn to each other and pass the peace. May the light of Christ shine through us all. Amen.
friends, as we gather back together, we have received a few prayer requests. Um, one from Danny and Debbie Pierce, their son, who they've been in Utah for the past several weeks, helping him recover from a paragliding accident. He is walking on his own, and he's getting stronger every day. So, yeah. And so they're going to get to begin their drive home on Monday. So prayers for their safe travels. Catherine Deweese asked for continued prayers of healing and patience for Tim and Marcy Jones and Keith and Kathy Booth. Kathy Robertson asked for prayers for um, Ricky Tilson and Tammy Orr and prayers for Diane Chris mother, Yvonne. Jenny Cox asked for continued prayers for her sister who will begin um, cancer treatments this week. We also want to lift Nancy, who was the recent recipient of a ramp, um, and just pray that she continues to find mobility. And then um, James and Sally Heights, great knee, great knees, correct? Yep. She was the one who's four months old and had just received open heart surgery, and she's already home. So um, prayers for her continued healing. Um, thank you for always being a congregation that prays. Lord Jesus, we know that you are here among us this morning, for you told us where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. We now further claim your promise that if two of us on earth agree about anything we ask for, it will be done for us by your Father in heaven. We lift up the homebound, all facing difficult diagnoses and their caregivers. Grant them the strength and courage and to recall your promise, Lord, to be with them always to the very end of the age. For the lonely and weary, we ask you provide them companionship and hope, reminding them that they are not alone and are loved. Holy Spirit, pour out your gifts on us and empower us to heal our community. We strive to end poverty, hunger, and homelessness. Let us remember that whatever we do for the least of these, we do for Jesus. And fill our hearts with a passion for justice and the restoration of God's creation. Lord, our hearts yearn for an end to international disputes and military conflicts. Pave the way for nations to coexist in harmony, pouring out the twin gifts of justice and peaceful resolution of conflicts. May the light of your love show us the path to global peace. Truly, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. In all these things, we place our hopes and concerns before you, always trusting in your mercy and boundless love. We pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is a reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the desert forty days, being tempted by Satan. 
He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put into prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the word of God for the people of God. We are so blessed to have Brad step forward today and do the prayers. We're very grateful for your prayer today and your participation. Thank you. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Also, we are excited today. Donna Marie Todd will be leading the message, and we're, ex- we're grateful. She is a storyteller. And um, you can, if anybody's interested in looking at this, it's the biblical storyteller of which she's the editor and gifted in this. So we're, we're very, very grateful that she is here leading the way and, and, and bringing to us the message of Christ today. Thank you for stepping forward and doing that. We look forward to it. You're also doing the children's message. So all of this, we give you thanks. Let us now go to the Lord in prayer for our offering. Lord, we come through those doors, each one of us, just as we are today. We come through those doors knowing your grace, your presence is with us. And in this mighty way, we recognize again that we can give not only our love to you, but that in this giving to you, We open space to receive the love that you have for us that's being poured into us by you and the Spirit. God, we we love together for worship. It is a time of not only fellowship, but it is claiming and naming who it is that we are worshiping. We thank you, God, for this. In this small basket that I hold, we recognize, Lord, that you can pour into it just a miracle more than what we can think or imagine. And so, Lord, we ask for these gifts that are given today to be then in turn given for your glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You can pass your baskets. Let us stand together.
Amen. You may be seated. I'm wondering if my really super strong helper Brantley could come up and help me. And um, would you like to help me too? You look pretty strong to me too. And then if all the kids could come on up, we're going to have um, an interesting conversation. I have to take steps one at a time. Why do you think that is? Why would you think that would be? You know. Yeah. <clears throat> because getting old is not for sissies, that's why. <laughs> oh, hey, come on up. I have a shirt just exactly that color, and I love it so much. So um, I have a question for you. But first, I want to just tell you something. I want to tell you my name, because our names are really important. I'm Donna Marie. I have two first names, Donna Marie. Can you say that? Very good. And your name is? Ethan. Ethan. What? Did I mispronounce it? It's Asa. It's... Say it again. Asa. Asa. Brantley. Brantley. Owen. Owen. Charlie. Charlie. I love that. Mari. Mari. Owen. Owen. And that's Tallulah. Tallulah. What a beautiful name. Yeah. So, see, the reason it's important that I know your names is, number one, I've never met you all before because I'm kind of new here. And the other reason is that God calls each of us by name. So knowing that God calls you by name is a really important thing. Now, God looks at things a little differently than we do. Like, when you're at school, what kind of things do you think people judge other people for? Their clothing. Yeah, people definitely judge other people for their clothing. No two ways about that. You don't know. Brantley, help me out. What do people judge other people for? Whether they're nice or not. Oh, whether they're nice or not. Yeah, that's true. That is important. Yeah. Anything else? What about how smart you are? Have you ever been felt... <laughs> if you get good grades, right? Then everybody's like, oh, they get good grades. And what else? Uh, their skin color. There's, ooh, their skin color. Yes, we do judge people by that, don't we? That's very unfortunate, but yes, we do. We do that because we're human. So I, I brought you something today to look at. I'm going to hold it up so the grown-ups can see it too. How would you describe this? What would you say about this? What is that thing? What is that thing? That's a great, yeah, <laughs> for sure. For sure, what is it? But I, I mean the characteristics of it. Like, so can you flick off some of its skin? Try it. Just try flicking off some of its skin. Do it again, like right there. Does it? Look at that. Flakes right off. You try it. You want to try it? Just flake off some of the skin. It's not going to hurt it. Flick it off. Flick it off. Flick it. There you go. Flick it off. Look at. <laughs> so would you say that this? Thank you. Um, you want to try flicking it off, Charlie? No, you're good? Okay. So, would you say that this, um, this is an amaryllis bulb, by the way, but would you say that this is attractive? Yeah. Huh? I don't even know what it means. <laughs> you don't even know what it means. Well, that's good. But do you think it's pretty? No. no. Would you call this pretty? No. no. Let me hear you say that really loud, because they can't hear you. No. 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 So here's the thing. See, we look at this from the outside, right? And we see something, we can flick the skin off. Oh my goodness. Could... It's not very pretty. It's got all these scraggly roots on it, right? But that's how we see it. Now here's the thing. In the first book of Samuel, God says to Samuel when he's looking for a new king for Israel, he says, hey, don't look on the outside. That's how people look at things. People look at things from the outside. But God sees in the heart. So see, God knows what's on the inside of this. Now, Brantley, behind you over there is a great big heavy plant. Will you bring that over here, please? It's heavy. I warn you, I picked you out because you were strong. <clears throat> oh, man. It's light. Well, bring it over here where everybody can see it. This is what God sees when God looks at this. God sees a beautiful bloom. This is the same thing. Look at them. But this is what God sees. God doesn't see this. 
God sees this. And that's the same way God looks at you. No, don't, you, want to, you want to take that to your mom? Okay, all right, you can have it. You need to take that one? Okay. I'm going to tell you now, kids will keep you honest, okay? They will keep you honest. Okay, so um, if you wouldn't mind putting that back over there, that would be great. Thank you, Brandon. Before the whole thing is gone, I mean, you know. Yeah, it could happen. So, uh, okay, so, all right, so here's the thing. Look at those again. Hold them up high so everybody can see them in case they didn't see them. God sees in the heart. God sees what you are on the inside. God doesn't care about how tall you are or smart you are or what kind of clothes you wear or what color you are because God sees you for who you are in your heart. So will you pray with me for just a moment? God, I just want to thank you that you love us for who we are and that you call each of us by name. And Lord, if you can turn an ugly, wilting bulb with scraggly roots into a beautiful flower, I can't wait to see what you do with each of these amazing children. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you very much for helping me. Can you move this chair back over there? Wait till I stand up. <laughs> Thank you, and I hope I see you next week. I hope you all come back. Go ahead, you can go down there so Brantley can move that without knocking over Miss Connie's drums. That would not be pretty. <clears throat> Man, you're strong. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, the plant was in the way, yeah. Something only God can see. Thank you so much for letting me come today and mess up your chancel area with plant debris. Um, I grew up in the hills of West Virginia, amen? You're going to have to do better than that. I grew up in the hills of West Virginia, amen? Uh-huh. And my daddy was the Reverend Dr. Ross M. Evans, a Methodist pastor. And I want to tell you a story today about belonging, about being called by name, about the importance of baptism. Now, it takes place in my childhood. It's a true story. And we start the story out when I'm eight years old. So just taking a deep breath and imagine me as an eight-year-old. <laughs> it's been a very long time. <laughs> So I was so excited, right? Because we were going to go to our camp on Second Creek. And I love to go to our camp on Second Creek because I could run through the woods, I could swing on the grapevines, I could hunt for salamanders and box turtles in the mud by the creek. And I was looking out the back window of the car as we were driving down the very last part of the trip, down the old dirt road that led past the old Reynolds place. And I was watching out the back window as the car kicked up little puffs of dust that landed on the heads of the goldenrod. We began that steep driveway up to the old man's house. Woo, we were almost there. <laughs> and then I heard my dad say to my mom, Virginia, I think I should just stop and check in on the old fella. Oh, my heart dropped like a rock. Because even though my daddy had taken off his clerical collar, he had not taken off his call to ministry. And as we pulled in next to that house, I just knew, I just knew it was going to be hours before we got to the camp. Now, the old Reynolds house, it wasn't much. It was uh, two rooms and a lean-to, and it hadn't been painted since the day it was built. And on the inside, the linoleum was all yellow and peeling up. And usually there were just beans and cornbread and sweet well water on the table for supper. But it was home. And Reynolds had lived there 
Mm. As long as anyone could remember. Now, Mr. Reynolds was a sly, shy, short man with blue eyes that crinkled up when he smiled. And as we pulled up next to the house, he was sitting out on his side porch, <clears throat> and he was uh, stringing runner beans for drying and chain smoking camel cigarettes. <laughs> He'd take his needle and pick a bean up out of his poke. That's West Virginia for sack. He'd stick the needle through it and pull it on down the thread. He'd pick another bean up, stick the needle through it, pull on down the thread, and then he'd expertly tuck that needle into his faded blue jeans. He took out his unfiltered pack of camel cigarettes, tapped one out, lit it up. <laughs> and when he saw that we were in his side yard and saw my daddy's face, he threw down that cigarette, came running down the steps and leaned into the door of the car and said, well, hello there, preacher. Uh, <clears throat> good to see you. Uh, I got something on my heart. I'd like for you to come up on the porch and I'd like to tell you about it. Well, now, that was more words than we'd ever heard the old man say all at once. So, Daddy said, I'll be right back, which meant in a couple years he'd return. <laughs> and then he got out of the car, and he uh, went up on the porch. And Mr. Reynolds motioned him to sit in one rocker, and he sat down the other one. He took out that needle again, took a bean, poked the needle through it, pulled it down the thread. And then he started telling my Daddy about... <clears throat> how he was wanting to be baptized. And Daddy didn't ask him why, because he could hear that cough as well as any man. And being that he was a preacher, he knew what it was that people think about when they're dying. And Mr. Reynolds said that a few weeks before that, while he'd, uh, <clears throat> he'd gotten cleaned up as best he could, he'd put on his best clothes, and then he'd gone down in the valley to that Pentecostal church, the one whose steeple he could see from his front window. And oh, when he walked in, it had been so pretty. While well, the autumn sun had been streaming through the orange and yellow stained glass window, falling all around this young girl who was standing up in the front of the church, long red hair freckles across her face. And she was standing up there, and she was singing her very first solo ever in church. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace. Then the preacher man stood up. He had his hair slicked back. He was sweaty already. And when he started rolling up the sleeves of his starch white shirt, everybody in there knew what was going to happen next. Amen, huh? Amen. What'd you say, brother? Huh? Amen. Amen. He started talking about how there was going to be a heavenly banquet. Amen. Amen. Uh huh. How there was going to be fried chicken and pork chops too, huh? Ah, uh -huh. for all them that have been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, uh -huh. and when he gave that altar call, that old man, he felt the Holy Spirit stirring in his heart. And Mr. Reynolds stood up. And he was going to go down there, and he was going to give his life to Jesus. He was going to be baptized. until he saw the way folks were looking at him, judging him for the way he was dressed. 
He'd never felt like such a stranger in his whole life. And he knew half the folks there. He felt so ashamed that he has turned around and left. And he told my daddy that when he got home, he'd gone out into his side yard. And he had prayed to God. He had said, now, Lord, it's Bill Reynolds. I reckon you know that already. Lord, I'm going to be honest with you, sir. I don't know how long I've got. And I want to be baptized. But I can't. I can't go back down to that church, Lord, with people judging me like that. I can't do it. Oh, Lord, please don't ask me to. If you want me to belong to you the way that I want to belong to you, well, then you're just going to have to come to me, sir. He turned to my daddy and said, reckon that's why you're here, preacher. (laughs) And you know what was funny about that whole thing was that the biggest baptizing hole in all the county laid right there in the middle of that old man's yard. And, and those, those Pentecostals, the, the ones that didn't want Mr. Reynolds at their heavenly banquet, well, they liked to baptize people in his creek. And the easiest way to get to it was just to cross his land, right? Of course, now, there was one other way you could get there. You could uh, drive down the county road, and you could uh, park up against the guardrail. <clears throat> you could climb over the guardrail, and you could walk down the walls a cop ahead, holla, woo! Ha <laughs> ha, that's how the rollers did it. <laughs> now, there wasn't as many of them rollers and snake handlers in them hills as there used to be, but there was still more than most folks like to admit. And they'd get all fired up in the Holy Spirit, aha, uh-huh! talking in tongues, handling snakes. They'd get out their jars of water moccasins, <laughs> copperheads. <laughs> rattlesnakes and they'd scare their converts into getting baptized and then they'd walk them down the walls a cup ahead holler oh ho ho brother john just hoping that a snake would come out so he could grab it and show off but the um the methodists (laughs) and uh the baptists um And the Presbyterians, especially the Presbyterians, (laughs) they had worked far too hard to get one of their converts to risk walking them down some snake-infested holler and having them get snake bit. So they would just ask the old man if they could cross his land. And since he was a neighborly sort, well, he always said yes. But Bill Reynolds was a mountain man, make no mistake. So he watched him while they was on his land. He told my dad, he said it happened the same way every time, that they'd pull up in the side yard in their shiny cars, and the women would get out carrying the the quilts and the blankets to wrap them being baptized in. And then they'd walk down through his pasture, down through the the knee-high grass and the Queen Anne's lace and the black, the... (coughs) Blackberry briars, down to the soft, sandy bank of Second Creek. And they'd slide off their shoes, and that wet sand, it would sneak up between their toes. Now, the preacher man, he always went out into the waist-high, freezing cold water first. He'd lift his hands over his head, and he'd quote scripture. And then they'd sing the song they always sang. Shall we gather at the river where bright angels' feet have trod with its crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God? Sing it with me. Yes, we will gather at the river the beautiful, the beautiful river Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. 
And then the preacher would ask them being baptized to come out into that icy cold water. And then he'd ask them the question, do you claim Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And if they said yes, yes they did. Then the preacher would take them by the shoulders and dip them deep over into those icy cold waters of Second Creek, and the preacher would baptize them in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. And when they brought them up out of that water, they were shaking wet and crying. It was such a look of joy on their faces. It was something else to behold. And then they'd go over to the bank, and the women would wrap them in the quilts and the blankets, and the preacher, he'd pray over them. And then they'd slide their shoes back on. and They'd walk back through the pasture, back through the blackberry briars and the Queen Anne's lace and the knee-high grass. And they'd get in their shiny cars and they'd leave. And the old man told Daddy the last time he seen it, it had filled his heart with such a yearning, such a longing, he wanted to be baptized. And then he picked up a bean and he poked the needle through it and pulled it down the thread. Picked up a bean and poked the needle through it, pulled it down the thread. Stuck that needle in his faded blue jeans. Took out his pack of unfiltered camel cigarettes and tapped one out. My daddy was trying to figure out if he would have time to come back, back by the house and baptize the old fella before that all-important evangelism committee meeting at the church. When all of a sudden, God sent my daddy a telegram. A monarch butterfly, son of the Lord's own resurrection, landed right there on a milkweed in his front yard. And as the Autumn sun streamed through its orange and yellow stained glass wings. My daddy got the message. And he said, Bill Reynolds, this is about as fine a day for a baptizing as you're likely to find. Now, what say you just go in the house and get Macy, and, well, let's just go on down to the creek and baptize you right now. So he jumped up so excited. He ran in the house, come back out with Macy. And there in her arms, she was carrying the quilt that his grandmother had made for him when he was just a baby. It had his initials embroidered right there on it. And then Daddy got us to go down, and we all walked down through the pasture, down through the knee-high grass, and the Queen Anne's lace, and the the blackberry briars. We got down to the soft, sandy bank of Second Creek, We slid off our shoes and that wet sand snuck up between our toes. Daddy, he he went out into that waist-high, freezing cold water first, and he, he lifted his hands over his head, and he quoted scripture. And then we sang the song they always sang. Shall we gather at the river? Where bright angels' feet have trod, with its crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God. Yes, we will gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river, that flows by the throne of God. And then Daddy called Bill Reynolds to come out into that icy cold water, and when that old fella stepped into that waist-high, freezing cold stream, his whole face turned blue. Daddy thought he'd lost him right there. (laughs) But by the sheer force of mountain man determination, Bill Reynolds walked out into that water. My Daddy asked him the question, Bill Reynolds, do you take Jesus as your Lord and Savior? (laughs) Yes. 
yes, he did. <laughs> and then Daddy took him by the shoulders, and he dipped him deep over into the icy cold waters of Second Creek. And he baptized Mr. Reynolds in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. And when he brought him up out of that water, he was shaking wet and crying, but with such a look of joy on his face, it was something else to behold. And then Daddy helped him over to the bank. And Macy, she took that quilt and she wrapped it around him. It had his initials embroidered right there on it. And then Daddy prayed over him. And we slid our shoes back on and we walked back through the pasture, back through the... the <laughs> The, black, the blackberry briars, Queen Anne's lace, knee-high grass. And we got in our shiny car and left. We went on to the camp. Yay! And Bill Reynolds, he stood out there in that autumn sun with such a look of contentment on his face. Because he knew he was finally welcome at Jesus' heavenly banquet. And that monarch butterfly, sign of the Lord's own resurrection, we got up and started dancing all around that old fella's head. Because you see, up in heaven, a celebration was going on too. Because Bill Reynolds, sinner, had finally accepted the invitation of the Lord Jesus Christ to be his guest of honor at the heavenly banquet. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. But now I see it was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first Amen. Amen.
Those able, please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I've got a few announcements to share with you. Of course, you can always check them out on the back of your bulletin. First of all, there's some wonderful opportunities immediately following church today. We've got several groups. We've got the first kids growth class in the Pinnacle Room, highs and lows for youth in the Wesley Room, something that's uh, pretty new, the gift group for adults in the Balsam Room, that's up above the gym. Uh, we've got the women's Bible study in the Dogwood, and we've got Journey to the Sun in the Wellspring Conference Room. In addition, uh, please be reminded that we do have the Lent Bible study that will be meeting on Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. And finally, uh, we've got the father-daughter da father dance coming up. Uh, we'd love to have a few more volunteers. You can reach out to Miss Jessica or uh, head over to silverumc.org serve to sign up to help out with that dance. Right. And now we've got our closing hymn. All righty. Take one, two. All righty. Hmm. All righty. This 
from the old hymns called Oh How I Love Jesus. So I expect you guys to sing this loud because it's a great one. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, Thank you for your music today, April. Thank you for everybody that sings every week and does this. We just thank you so much. It is truly a blessing for our church to hear this beautiful music. Donna Marie, if you'll stand with me, we're going to sing our closing, our closing song today, and it is going to be our benediction, and we'll use this during the time also of Lent. Let us sing together. Let there be peace on earth. Thank you, Donna Marie, so much. It's beautiful. Thank you.
Thank you again, Donna Marie. Let us go and be greeted with everyone. Thanks.